everyone, I'm Jessica from Hot Knots and today I'm going to show you how to make a Moses basket step by step. This is the perfect gender neutral gift for babies. You can make it in any color and today I'm going to be using these colors of t-shirt yarn. Here are the accessories you're going to need to make the Moses basket. The first thing you need to get um, are three coordinating colors of t-shirt yarn. This is Z Pagetti t-shirt yarn, low stretch from Hooked. This is the company I use because they have the largest variety. You can get this anywhere, but what's important is to get the low stretch. Um, and you can see here about the thickness compared to my hook, okay? Get three coordinating colors as well as the base color. Now these are giant bobbins. They are about 120 meters or 131 yards of t-shirt yarn and they weigh about 850 grams or roughly two pounds each. Now you're not going to use all of the yarn, but it's good to have extra in case you want to make accessories. I also went ahead and got a little bit of yellow to just make like stars or you know something else, pom poms to you know accessorize. So you need to get your t-shirt yarn, you need to get a size 9 millimeter hook, and I'll talk about hooks in a minute. Um, you need to get a tapestry needle that's plastic. This is what I have found to be the easiest type of tapestry needles to use instead of the metal ones when working with t-shirt yarn. You need to get a few stitch markers. I would use more than two, but this is all I have at the moment. You need some scissors. You also need to get um, a pom-pom border. You need to get about a yard of fabric. That gives us plenty of room to work with. You're not going to consume the whole thing, but just get a yard. Then you're going to need to get your mattress. So this pattern is made to fit this mattress, which is about 12 by 28 inches or 30 by 70 centimeters. This brand actually, um, I got in Italy because I live in Italy and the brand is Dolci Coccola. The brand that I got was just from a local store here nearby me and it was Dolci Coccola, but you can also get these on um, Amazon or Etsy. They have different sizes, lots of different sizes, but I wanted to get a really good mattress because it's going to be for a baby, so this is what I got. And then whenever we do the portion of the video where I show you how to sew the sheet for the mattress. I'll tell you about some more accessories you need particularly for this, which would just be elastic and pins and the typical things that you use when you sew. But just for the, the Moses basket, this is the basic stuff that you need. Now before we move on, it might be a good idea for you to have a couple extra hooks um, available. So. Like I said, I always work with t-shirt yarn. It's like the number one thing I crochet with. And typically when you work with t-shirt yarn, you're gonna use a size 10 or a size 12 millimeter hook. You can also use a size 15. However, because we want this basket to be really stiff on the sides and stand up, we're gonna use a size smaller, which is the nine millimeter hook. Some people also even go further to use a size six millimeter hook, but that's going to be really difficult on your hands and really rough. It's already kind of difficult to work with t-shirt yarn if you're not used to it, so we're going to go with an, a size 9. This is just a trick to make the basket sides stand up. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and grab your base color. This is going to be for the base of the Moses basket and also the ending portion of the basket. Um, you can find the center hole if you really try, um, but it's always been really difficult for me with t-shirt yarn, so I usually, oh, oh, actually today I was able to do it. Okay, go ahead and get your center pull if you can, and you're going to put this on your hook, and we're going to chain 30. Try 
tie the chain loosely, a lot of people would actually use a different size hook just for the chain because the chain is always tighter. So if you feel like it, use a different size hook, but it's not gonna be too noticeable because I'm just doing a loose chain. All right, so I've chained 30 and I've counted those stitches. Now I'm going to work across my chain, skipping the first, going into, into the second. I'm gonna twist my chain and go into those back bumps. And I'm gonna do single crochet all the way across until the very last. I'm gonna stop before the very last stitch. Going into the back bumps. And you may be like, why, why are you doing this? Look, look what happens. I've got two loops now on my bottom chain. So that's why you wanna do that. So, in Italian, this is called the punto basso, and this is what we're making across the chain, la catena. I know we have a lot of a lot of viewers who watch from around the world. Not everyone speaks English as their first language, so trying to help everyone out. Okay, so I've crocheted all the way across and now I have one stitch left and I'm just gonna go into the last stitch in the third back bump and I'm gonna do three stitches in here. One, two, and three. Now, We've worked across this row, we've done three in the end, and now we're gonna go and work on the bottom side. You can see I have a nice chain here, and this is why I went into those third back loops. So now I'm going to go across the chain, I'm gonna crochet over my tail, and I'm not gonna go into the same hole I just went into, but into this next stitch here. So I'm just gonna go in there, around those two loops, and single crochet, and I'm gonna go into every stitch across. All right, and in the last stitch, we're gonna do two stitches. And we're going to slip stitch into the first from the other side. and that gives us a total of 60 stitches for this round. Round two, we're going to chain one and single crochet in this same space. Okay, and now we're going to crochet 27 across until we get to the other end portion and then we'll do our increase on just the end to make the oval shape. So this is my first. And I've done my 27 across, and now I'm gonna increase on just these three stitches for the end. So in this first stitch, I'm gonna do two single crochet. In this next stitch, I'm gonna do two. And in this next, I'm gonna do two. Okay, and now I'm at the bottom portion. I'm at the bottom now and I'm gonna go across doing 27 stitches until I get to the other corner. I've done my 27, now I'm at the end, I'm gonna to do two stitches here and two stitches here. Two here. Two 
and here we are back at the beginning where I have my chain one and then my first stitch. Here I'm gonna slip stitch into my chain, like so. So whenever you do the increase for an oval, you start out with the first portion of your increase when you start the row, then you do your static stitches across, you come back around, then you finish off your increase. So you're really splitting it up. You're splitting up the increases at the first half and the second half of the first portion. On the other side, you're increasing all together. So you're only increasing by three increased stitches for every round. Round three, we're gonna chain one. This always counts as a stitch. And we're gonna single crochet in the same space. So this is my same space right here now. And this counts as my first portion of the increase on this beginning side. I'm gonna put my stitch marker in my chain one. If you don't wanna do that, it's okay. But it doesn't hurt. Okay, now for this row, I'm going to single crochet one in the next. And then I'm going to do my 27 across on this row. After I do this 27, I'm only gonna be increasing on this portion of the row. Then I'm gonna do my 27 here, and I'm gonna finish the increase on this side. So this is how we do the oval shape. This 27 stitch count is static, and then you're only increasing like on the half circle. So I've done my increase. I did one stitch here. Now I'm gonna do 27 across. So I am also gonna put a stitch marker on my first stitch of the 27. If you're starting out making an oval shape for the first time, this is probably a good idea so you don't get caught up. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do my 27 across. And if you wanted to do the knit stitch instead of the single crochet for the base, your work is gonna be even more firm and tight. I'm just skipping that because it's um, time consuming and I wanna show you how to make the base quickly. I've done, this is my last stitch. Now I'm gonna do two in the next. And one in the next for a total of three times. So two in the next. One in the next. Two in the next. And one in the next. Flip my work around. Now I need to do 27 across. So this is my first. All right, on this other corner, I'm going to do two. One, two, and one. Remember that when we started our row, we did two and one here. So this is the two thirds of our three, okay? So now you're gonna slip stitch inside the chain. So we're not slip stitching. So remember the chain one counts. So that's gonna, so you're gonna slip stitch inside there. Like that, okay? So since we're, we always have an increase of six, that would be 72 stitches. On to round four. We're going to chain one single crochet in the same space. This time, we're gonna do two stitches before our 27. 
So in the next, I'm going to do one, and in the next, one. And now, do my 27 across. Okay, and then we're going to do two stitches. And we're going to do two in between each increase. So do one, one, two. And I need to repeat that two more times for a total of three. So one, one, two. And then I need to do my two here. So let's go back over so you understand better. We did our 27. I did my increase, so that's two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one. Okay? Then we flip on the other side. And then we do 27 across. All right, so now we've done our 27 on this side. We do two in the next. That's an increase. And then we do one, one. Two here, one, one. Okay, from the beginning we did our increase that was our chain one plus one in the same stitch and then we did our two here. So this is the first portion of our increase for the, the closing round, right? So we're going to slip stitch to our first. Okay. And that should be a total of 78 stitches. So this is four rounds four completed rounds, and if you get lost counting this because you're going around, don't do that. You don't need to go around and around to count. All you need to do is start from the beginning, right? This is the very middle. You can see because they're upside down. So this is round one, this is round two, round three, round four. And then this is the opposite direction. So now we're on round five. Now, what we were doing is in between each increase, we have to augment the number of stitches. We started with one in between the increase, then we did two in between the increase, then we have to continue. We do three in between each increase, four, five, and we keep going like that just on the half circle. And we do the 27 across. However, we want to now, um, we don't want the increase to always be in the same spots because then our um, oval is gonna look pointy in certain areas. We want it to be as smooth as possible. So I'm just gonna change up the direction of the increases. So round five, we're gonna chain one. In this round for the increase, we need to have three stitches between our increase. So I'm going to say this is my first. I'm going to do one in the next, one in the next, and then I'm going to do my increase here. OK? 
okay? So I'm switching up where my, in my increase lands, and I'm just going to put my stitch marker in the first. Follow along with this video, and you'll understand when we do this row versus just reading the pattern, it might be confusing. I'm now going to do 27 across. Now, instead of doing two in the next, I'm going to do three, and then I'm going to do my increase. So you're not changing up very much. You're just changing up what goes first. So I'm going to do my in-between stitches first. So that's three, then I do my two, and I have to repeat that two more times for a total of three. So I'm going to do one, two, three, two. One, two, three, two. Okay? So then we do our 27. So again, what do we do? We usually would start with two, the increase, and then do our stitches, and then the increase. We just switched it around so that it lays differently and it becomes smoother. It becomes rounder, okay? You'll see what that looks like as, you, as it becomes bigger. So now we're going to do our 27 cross till we get to the other side. All right, on to the other side. So now we're gonna do one, two, three, two. One, two, three, two to finish the end, okay? We're just changing up where the increase lies. So increase here. And then our last three stitches before our last increase. And two here. Okay. And this is where we slip stitch. And that's the end of row five. So on to round six, we're going to continue. We have a total of 11, 11 rounds okay, of increasing to get to the right length and width for the mattress. You can alternate the way I was doing it, where the increase lies, or follow the pattern directly as I've written it. So I'm going to do round six. So I'm going to chain one. Now we need to have four stitches between each increase. So we always have three increases on the round end. So I'm going to do one here, two, three, four. Then I'm going to do my increase. seven across. Okay, on this side, I'm going to now, after my 27th stitch, I'm going to do four. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, and then an increase. Same thing, three times total. Four, increase. And one more time. here. Okay, do my 27 across. Okay, so on the over here, 
we are going to do four. Increase. Four. Increase. slip stitch to our chain one which is here okay that's row six now I'm seeing that there's this little hump here because I've been increasing here I'm going to switch back to the other method I was doing before so for round seven I'm going to single crochet in the same space as my chain one. And I'm going to do five stitches before my 27 count. So in the next space, I'm going to do a single crochet. my first portion of my increase I did two in this here so I have my chain one plus the one in the same space that's my increase and then I had one two three four five before my 27 so if it helps you remember put a stitch marker here okay now you start your 27 now here I'm going to do two so I'm going to start by the by increasing then I'm going to do five, then I'm going to increase, five, increase, okay, keep, keep going like that, so. And we're going to do our 27 across. Okay, and then on this corner, we're going to do our increase. We're going to do five. and five. Okay, and I'm going to slip stitch. in the same and the next stitch make a stitch do six so two three four five six okay stitch marker and then I'm going to start my 27 okay I've done my 27 and then I'm going to increase in the next and then I'm going to do my six increase six and increase okay I did my increase, 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 plus the six. Now I'm going to go do my 27. Okay, and then I'm going to do my two, my six.
two here, and six. And slip stitch. Okay, now you may start forgetting what row am I on? I totally get it. So remember, this is our middle. These stitches are going backwards, so you just count with one row. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have done eight rows, so this is row nine now. For row nine, I'm gonna switch again my method of where, I, of where my increase lies. So I need to do seven in between my increases. So I'm gonna just start out doing seven. So the chain one counts into the next stitch, that's two, and the next, three, four, five, six, seven, and then our increase. And then we're gonna do our 27 across. Okay, I've done my 27. Now I'm gonna do my seven first. And then my increase. And I need to do that two more times. And now on to this side for seven, I mean 27. Okay, and I'm gonna do my seven here. My increase. One more time, round 10, chain one, single crochet in the same, and now we're gonna do eight stitches. seven across and now we're gonna do two and eight three times and then I do my 27 across and I'm gonna do my two One more row to go, row 11, and I'm gonna switch one more time. This time we have to do nine. So I'm gonna chain one, single crochet in next. Then we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, increase, 27, okay, and now on this side I'm gonna do nine, and then I'm gonna do my increase, Increase. 
So on the end, we started out doing our nine, increase, nine, increase, nine, increase. Let's do our last row of 27. And we're gonna do nine, increase, slip stitch and that is the end um, you should have 120 stitches now um, if I measure this this is 11 and a half 11 and three quarters of an inch wide by 27 and a half in centimeters to 71 centimeters um, 31 and a half, 30 and a half centimeters wide so every t-shirt yarn every type of t-shirt yarn you use can change in thickness um, this is what's left of my bobbin of the gray you can see how much I've used over half I would say and my yarn got changed thickness as I went. This is just the nature of t-shirt yarn. So if you feel like this is too small, then do one more row. But for me, I think it fits my mattress. When I feel this, it's actually the, the perfect width. Now we're gonna do the border around the base before we move on to the next portion of the video, which is doing the sides. Okay, so to make the nice braided border, I'm gonna grab um, the darkest color of my three because I wanna start my ombre effect with the dark color at the bottom. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna grab this and what you need to do is you need to pull out your hook. You need to flip over your piece and just keep the yarn attached. Don't worry about that for right now. Get your other yarn And you can start anywhere, it doesn't matter where. You're just gonna insert your hook like this. Put your yarn over your hook. And you're gonna pull through a loop like so. And then you're going to slip stitch all the way around. Okay? And you adjust your tension, you know, as you go. I'm just gonna go around and slip stitch through Okay, so when you come around to this portion, what you need to do is you need to bend this in as well as keep this string on this side and you just need to slip stitch over it. So tucking this in, slip stitch over it because you'll pick this up on the other side. Okay, so when you get to this point, before going into here, you're going to stop and you're gonna cut this, cut this, pull this through, get out your tapestry needle, and you're gonna do an invisible slip stitch join where you go underneath these two loops come through and then you're going to go back through the top and into the bottom okay and you're going to just adjust your tension like that And then on this side, you can tie it like this. 
and then you can just thread this through on the bottom.